end. Love is patient. No one can truly, the same way we cannot truly live the Christian life outside the help of God. We cannot truly live the Christian life outside the help of the Holy Spirit. The same way we cannot truly live the married life outside the help of the Holy Spirit. I cannot purely, truly love without the help of the Holy Spirit. I cannot truly respect without the help of the Holy Spirit because I will see reasons why I shouldn't. The same way the man cannot truly unconditionally love without the help of the Holy Spirit because he will see reasons why he should not love unconditionally. So, but when we set out to outdo one another, when we set out not to keep scores of wrongs done to us, when we set out to be kind, to be gentle, to be patient, I'm kind. My words are kind towards my spouse. I'm patient. I'm long-suffering. I don't keep account of wrongs done to me. You did this yesterday. You did it two years ago, three years ago. That was what you did today. That's what you are doing. You, tomorrow you will do the same thing. No, we do not keep account of wrongs done to us because the more you keep the account, the more it brings down your emotional account. The more it drains you emotionally. So let us, by the help of the Spirit, have to do one another how to do one another, how to do one another, how to do one another, walk in love with your spouse. Have you noticed that it's very easy to walk in love with a fellow brother or sister in church than to walk in love with your spouse? Because somewhere at the back of your mind, they don't know me, you, you know me, and you said this to me, so I will not take it from you. No, let's extend the hand of mercy, let's extend the hand of love towards our spouse, knowing that they are in perfect. So if I know you are not perfect, I will not expect perfection from you. Let me read this. 1 Corinthians 13, the Passion Translation. Love is large and incredibly patient. Love is gentle and consistently kind to all. It refuses to be jealous when blessing comes to someone else. Love does not brag about one's achievements not inflate its own importance. Love does not traffic in shame and disrespect, nor selfishly seek its own honor. Love is not easily irritated or quick to take offense. Love joyfully celebrates honesty and finds no delight in what is wrong. Love is a safe place of shelter, for it never stops believing the best for others. Love never takes failure as defeat, for it never gives up. Love never stops loving. It extends beyond the gift of prophecy, which eventually fades away. It is more enduring than tongues, which will one day fall silent. Love remains long after words of knowledge are forgotten. It remains. Love is large. Walk in love. The most difficult place to practice the principles of the kingdom and love work is a marriage. That's why we need the help of the Holy Spirit. That I'm in your life to complement you, to make your life easier, not heavier. I'm a complement to your life. Marriage is honorable. So this union is meant to bring honor to you is meant to bring honor to me. Your spouse will say things to you. Your spouse will do things to you. Because we're imperfect. And one secret I've learned is make excuses for them. Make excuses for them. Why did he say that? Why would he say that? Okay, maybe that wasn't what he was trying to say. It frees you from offense. It frees you from offense. I remember the day my husband said, I can't remember what we were talking about, and he said, Uh uh. Sebi, you went to school now. Oh. And he kept on talking, oh, and he was laughing. Ah. Okay. After the discussion, after I left that place, you know the way the devil likes to, you know, the, devil, the way the devil works, that thing just kept on ringing in my head. You know, you went to school now. You went to school. So, what was he trying to say? That I'm not smart? That I'm daft? What was he trying to say? Ah, that I'm not intelligent? Why would he say I'm not intelligent? I had a two one now. 
How would he say I'm not intelligent? Or was it because of what? And then, before you know what's happening, the more you think about it, you get angry. The more you think about it, the more that anger increases. And instead of assume, why not say, now I'm sure that's not what he was saying. I'm sure he was just saying that uh, you know now. You know. Not that you are daft, but that you know. And even if you think that is what he's saying, rather than assume, you know, a lot of times we assume. Why not say, ah, sweetheart, kill me by that thing that you said. That, um, maybe you went to school. I, sorry, what did you mean by, by that? Ah, no, 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 no. I just said, okay, no, I'm just asking. No, I just want to be clear. He said, no, ah, no, no, no. That was what I meant. I was like, ah, you know now. Like, just, you were trying, you weren't, you were trying to act like you don't know. But I know you know. That that was what I was trying to say. I said, ah, okay. I just wanted to be sure. Because it sounded like, oh, smart. I said, ah, Bukola, why do you, why do people think like that? I said, no, I just wanted to be sure. So that, because the devil was already playing with my mind, was already doing kalu kalu inside my head. As in, I was already going, ah, why would somebody say that? Am I a child? That's something you say to a Dave. Even Dave, God said, if you say that to Dave, it will be like you are telling me he's not intelligent. Why would you say that to an adult like me? Why would you say that to your own wife? That JB went to school. That is an insult. Can I say that to him? If I say that to him now, they will say that I insulted my husband. So why will he say that to him? Can you see the way the devil works with our brain? And that happens all the time. So believe the best. So rather than assume sometimes, ask. So that you can be clear on what was said. And this has been happening from Genesis. The devil said, um, Eve said, no, it is not me, it's the devil. Um, Adam said, no, it is not me, it's Eve. Eve said, no, it is not me, it's the devil. Who is the devil going to say it is not me? About the blame game. Somebody must always be responsible. No. Just make it clear. <sighs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Sorry I took quite some time. I just had to pour it out. Because I'm believing God that in our generation things will be different. Statistics says that for every for every two marriages that take place two are ending that is marriages are breaking at the same rate at which they are forming and if you look at why marriages are breaking it's simply because we're breaking the law of God the law of love if we all begin to walk in love, we will solve like 95% of the issues in marriage. So maybe our prayer should be, Lord, let me see my spouse the way you see him. Let me see my spouse the way, let me see my wife the way you see her. Let me see my husband the way you see him. Lord, Grant me, give me the grace for marriage because there's grace for it. I'm not saying it's easy. It's not. It's not easy. And that's why we need the help of God. We need the help of the Holy Spirit. That no matter how difficult it gets, there's always a way around everything. There's always a way around everything. If you love your wife, you won't beat your wife. Because if you see your wife as the child of God, a fellow heir of the promise, you will not. The same way, if you see your husband as a fellow heir of God, a brother in Christ, it will change the way you see him. Let's make a difference in our generation. Let's change things in our generation. There was a time that you could almost be so sure. Christian marriages don't break. They don't break. But now, do you know that more 
Christian marriages break than um, unbelieving marriages. Do you know that? Do you know that? It's sad, but it's the truth. And then there are more Christian divorces than unbelieving divorces now. And I think that is, there's something wrong with that. There's something wrong. And I choose to see from the spiritual perspective that the enemy knows that because our relationship with Christ is like the relationship between a husband and wife. So he knows that if there's peace in the home, there will be peace in our lives. If there's fulfillment in the home, we will experience fulfillment. He knows he may not be able to stop your fulfillment of God's purpose. So he attacks the home. Because he knows that once there's no peace at home, you may not have peace of mind. And it's high time you and I need to rise up and say no more. No more. We will give it what it takes. We will fight it. We will stand on the word of God and we will win. We will change it. We will change the statistics. Ten years from now, let it be said that there are more Christian marriages succeeding than ever before because we are people helped by God. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for your word this morning. And Lord, I pray for every marriage represented in this place. Lord, you said in your word that marriage is honorable and the bed undefiled. And therefore, Lord, I pray that every marriage in this place will experience the honor of marriage in the name of Jesus. They will experience the financial honor of marriage in the name of Jesus the spiritual honor of marriage in the name of Jesus. Honor on every side in the name of Jesus. You said that the efforts of two is far better than the effort of one. And therefore, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every family in this place that where they have been doing one, Lord, through the force and power of marriage, Lord, let them begin to do two in the name of Jesus where they have been doing two, Lord, let them begin to do four in the name of Jesus. Lord, where they have been experiencing stagnation in the name of Jesus, but the blessing and the force of marriage, let progress come in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for every husband in this place. The Lord, you said in your word that husbands love your wives as Christ loves the church. And therefore, Lord, I pray for every husband in this place. I pray for the grace to love unconditionally in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for every wife in this place. You said, wives, submit to your husbands. You said, wives, come under your husbands. You said, wives, esteem your husbands. Therefore, Lord, I pray for every wife. That, Lord, you will give us the grace to honor the grace to highly esteem our husbands in the name of Jesus. Lord, help us to look beyond the weaknesses. Lord, help us to look beyond the mistakes. Lord, help us to extend the hand of grace, the hand of mercy to our spouses in the name of Jesus. That Lord, at the end of it all, that our marriages, oh God, will be light, will be models in the name of Jesus. Lord, let our marriages be the kind that our children will look at and will want to have in the name of Jesus. Let it be a good model for our kids. Lord, let our kids look at our lives, look at our marriages and say that this is the kind of marriage I would love to have in future in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I didn't preach a sobering message now. So shout hallelujah.